So we were watching London Real, weren't we? We were watching the Bruce Lipton, the American biologist, who I believe is the author of the Biology of Belief. Um, what's interesting is that when I think of biologists, like famous biologists, I think of Charles Darwin, Robert Hooke, Louis Pasteur, etc. Um, I wasn't familiar with this person initially, but um, in watching it, I thought this is interesting stuff because it seemed to he seemed to be advocating the philosophy that you have control. What 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 did you take from 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 the interview? Oh, it was it was so much. Um, I like that the interview even started had had barely started, and they were both so excited because. Uh, you know, it was promising us as well that it's going to be a very, very interesting in interview, and it was. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I felt as well, like, you know the whole thing about when he spoke about the placebo, you know, how... Um, and, and I think I'm paraphrasing here, where you're healed by the belief. So if John takes a pill, and John believes the pill is going to work, then that pill can be effective. And... Um, I like the flip side where it says like there's the power of positive thinking but then there's the destructive power of negative thinking. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really good point to make. So I guess one of the big things here is that it's challenging conventional science and this concept of, uh, I heard it before, but epigenetics. Mm -hmm. I mean that's an interesting concept, you know, the whole thing about you can... The way I interpret it is that you can control the genes, you can control the environment and our perception of environment, and yeah. and therefore control the genetic activity. What what was your, what was your thoughts on it? Well, yes, like uh, just like he said that um, that we always used to think that we are victims of our family history. Mm. So so everything that we have in our family history is is most likely that we have it as well. Yeah whatever it is, some good things as well as bad things. Yeah. But, uh, but the, the, I guess the positive thinking or a positive environment can change these things. It doesn't change the gene, but mm. it, um, how he was calling it, uh, expression of the DNA. So is he saying that basically a positive belief system can influence the gene in a negative, in a, in a positive way? That's what I'm... That's what I gathered, yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's the it's the environment and the perception of the environment. These were crucial factors. That's what that's that's what I took as well. Did yes. You, did you take the same? Yes, thing? like he was comparing that uh, you know with the first born child and the and the second born child. Mm. You know they are the it's it's a different person, but it's the same genes. You know that they they would be the same, but but very often um, the way how we raise the first child and then how we raise the second child it makes a huge difference. Um, if, 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 if we are more relaxed, say. So the other interesting thing he said was that diseases are multiple genes and you can, it was like he was stating you can uncreate disease. And he said that the body is made up of a hundred thousand protein blocks. And he gave like this interesting Lego analogy. Um, this is all science, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with with this information so it was very interesting and but the, the one thing he said was that a gene does not know what it does um i thought that was in good to me that kind of gave a gene like a characteristic like a human i could think of like you know let's say someone called jack and jack doesn't really know who he is jack the and, gene yeah jack the gene um, and it's interesting because to me, I thought of the metaphor of the car. You have control over the car to a certain extent. You have control of where it goes. Mm -hmm. And it was like he saw genes in that context. How how did you see it? What was your perspective? Well, if it's a Jack the Gene baby, then he doesn't know who he is. And then you give them give him the environment. And that's what he was talking about, that once you put the gene in the one or a different environment then that's then how um it that environment forms the gene and shapes mm. it and and makes it into 
uh, like he was saying, you know, makes it into a fat cell or makes it into a bone cell, or whatever. It's it's all about the environment. And yeah. so yeah, so Jack the Gene might become the genius mm. if you put him in the right environment. And and yeah, it really does focus on the power of the environment. And I think there's this other narrative as well is that I think a lot of us look at science as the be all and end all but this perspective would if it's true would indicate that science is still evolving mm. we haven't come to the end of science science still has a lot to learn there's still a lot that humans do not know so what else what what were your thoughts did you have any other thoughts on the subject uh, no, I just wanted to add that uh, to, to what you just said, that um, uh-huh. that uh, he was explaining that every time a scientist comes up with a new theory, he's a, he's a crazy one, and, and until yeah. um, someone starts to follow. Mm. Um, yeah, um, I, I really hope that his theories are true, because they're really cool. They have positive implications, don't they? Very much yeah. so, yeah. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting as well. Like he raised the whole thing about the capitalist issue and the issue that because it's environment and like lifestyle changes that can affect your genetics, it's hard to monetize it. And these can have negative implications. So that, that was interesting. But then the other thing that was like, I was like, okay, that, that, that's something that's making me think is the whole thing about how destructive stress is. And we use stress a lot in modern society, but when he talks about stress, it feels like, to use a metaphor or in a simile, like stress is like a lion that is just totally destroying your immune system. So I, I, I thought that that was, that was quite interesting. It made me think about stress, what stress is or how negative stress can be what what were your thoughts on it uh, yeah I, I found it interesting that how he explained um how stress um shuts off our immune system because mm-hmm. it turns on other things mm. um and and that comes from from long time ago it, it it's not not something new yeah. but um but how uh today there are so many causes for us to stress and therefore it's mm. not just a saber tooth lion like he was saying yeah. that can attack us but there is this and that and there are so many things to stress about and um and 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 we automatically get that fight or flight mode turned on and the immune system turned off mm. and if we live in a constant uh, state like that then i can only imagine that that uh, how much it destroys us indeed it's like we live in what could be considered a modern day society which has modern day stress which would be different to the stress of our ancestors right yeah 